Hello, McFluffy52 here, back with some more Outlaws of Thunder Junction action. Today we're playing a Rakdos deck that I'm pretty excited to show off uh, because we're playing a very interesting card with Laughing Jasper Flint. This is the reason I called the deck Rakdos Theft because Laughing Jasper Flint is a 3 mana 4-3. Uh, it has this first part of the text where it says creatures you control but don't own are mercenary in addition to their other types because the second part says at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top X cards of target opponent's library where X is the number of outlaws you control. So mercenaries are outlaws. So whenever you steal opponent's creatures, that's gonna increase your outlaw count uh, so that you exile even more cards uh, from the top of your opponent's library the next turn. So Laughing Jasper Flint can give you a lot of card advantage over the course of a game. On top of that, it's also just a legendary 4-3 for three which is pretty good uh so this deck has some like themes of uh outlaws and crime the other like card that kind of cares about crimes here is mac magda uh the horde master it's a two mana two two and whenever you commit a crime create a tapped treasure token this triggers once each turn and then if you have three treasures you can sacrifice three of them to create a four four scorpion dragon with flying in haste uh, so this just gives us more mana as we commit crimes and it also gives us a very interesting like curve out where we can play Shieldred on turn three. The way it works is we play Tiny Bones Joins Up, which is a legendary enchantment for one mana when it enters the battlefield, any number of target players each discard a card. So you play it, your opponent discards a card, and then whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, any number of target players each mill a card and lose one life. So you play this turn one, you play Magda turn two, you get to target your opponent with the tiny bones joins up legendary trigger and then you commit a crime when you target them so you create a treasure and then turn three you go ahead play a land and cast your shieldred which will again trigger tiny bone joins up and your opponent's going to lose another life and mill another card so there's some kind of cool lines in the deck um but you'll notice some other themes about this deck here is we have uh a lot of ways to gain life we got march of wretched sorrow which is kind of like removal for creatures and planeswalkers um but also gains us life problem on the ladder right now is a lot of things are very aggro uh because you have the whole slick shot show off type decks and so if you're not able to gain life back uh you can kind of get nickeled and dimed to death um so that's also why we're playing virtue persistence which is kind of two mana removal it gains you some life which is nice we're playing frexian flesh gorger which it plays nice with uh, a few things in this deck. It's nice to have a three mana three three that has like ward and menace and lifelink. Uh, but we can also reanimate it with Rakdos joins up, which is another one of the joins up legendary enchantments. Five mana, one uh, black, one red, and then three generic. Enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with two additional plus one counters on it. As uh, so we can return our like Laughing Jasper Flynn, our Shieldred, or if we played a uh, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger on three, it dies. We can reanimate it back as the massive 7 5 Menace Lifelink Ward, uh, which is very nice. And it gets two additional plus one counters. Uh, and then, important to note, it says whenever a creature, or sorry, a legendary creature you control dies, it deals damage equal to uh, that creature's power to target opponent. So this makes us have a little bit more direct damage to the opponent's face if they start removing our Shieldreds or. Uh, Laughing Jasper Flints and our Magdas. We're playing a bunch of removal in the deck. Uh, I guess I can sort this out here. We got Virtue Persistence, March of Rented Sorrow, the Go for the Throats, the Shieldred's Edict, the Braid to hit um, artifacts as well, the Path to Peril to deal with those low to the ground decks. And then uh, we have some interesting support cards. Another interesting card that we have is Lively Dirge. So it's a very powerful spree card because uh for three mana we can search our library to put a card into our graveyard so you can put any card so if you had a way to reanimate like giant artifacts you could go ahead and tutor up a portal to phyrexia into your graveyard for three mana seems pretty good you can pay an additional two uh on top of the any other modes to return up to two target creature cards with total mana four or less from your graveyard to the battlefield uh, so with this, if you pay five mana, you can tutor Shieldred into your graveyard and immediately reanimate it. So it's just like five mana Shieldred or five mana any card, creature card, four mana or less from your library onto the battlefield, which seems kind of crazy to me. Uh, so that's another card that we're playing here. 
Uh, and then another new card that we're playing that has some flexibility here is Insatiable Avarice. Uh, for the first mode, you can tutor your card or your tutor your library and put a card on top of your library. Uh, for the second mode, you can go ahead and draw three cards and lose three life. It says target player, uh, which is important here because also if we have children on the battlefield, we can choose to target our opponent, make them lose three life, draw three cards and lose six life from those three cards because of shielded streakers. So it's kind of nine damage for three mana if we have children on the battlefield. But that's kind of the entire idea of the deck. Let's go ahead and hop in some games and see how we do. All right. First hand here. Goal for today is to try and rank out of platinum. I tried to do this yesterday evening and uh i did not the uh the arena shuffler did not in, agree with me in terms of uh letting me uh <laughs> win uh but overall with the deck i am 11 and 7 with like all the different versions that i've played but this particular version where i added the march of wretched sorrow it's like one of the last ads that i made i'm 9 and 3 with so this deck has proven to be quite powerful um see if it will hold up in our matches today if you enjoy these kinds of videos make sure to subscribe uh trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of this year oh gosh the opponent's playing the combo deck so we just need to hold up removal then all right they're playing the combo uh deck with hulking metamorph and uh rakdos joins up and abuela's awakening there's a three card combo that can do infinite damage but you need to get both the Hulking Metamorph and a uh, Rakdos joins up into your graveyard. There's another Hulking Metamorph. So they could combo off as early as next turn. So I don't think I really want to play anything here. If we had like a two drop to play, I would play it, but... There's the Rakdos joins up, so if they have a Boilo's Awakening, they can win. They can return one of these cards from their graveyard to their hand. It's a good thing we're playing a deck built of boatloads of removal. Again, I can't really play anything out here because we have to hold up removal. I think I probably could have gotten away with playing like a Frexian Flesh Quarter last turn, but if they had like an Otherworldly Gaze, they had a chance to like win last turn so it's kind of why i've kind of waited here uh it's important to note you want to remove it as soon as it's reanimated while the trigger is on the stack uh just so that they can't combo off i believe that will kill the combo ask something for free chart a course that's fine a land off the top would be great Opponent could have like a protection spell on top of a reanimation, which I guess that's one way you can make the combo a little bit more resilient, but if we were playing like a mono red deck, I think we'd have stomped our opponent out. Like that is it prowess deck we played yesterday. I think that would have been finished off our opponent here already. Um But yeah, you're playing with a combo with three very specific cards. Oh, they discarded an Oblayla's Awakening. So they have the combo in hand. I think I'm honestly not going to play anything here. I could play Phyrexian Flesh Quarter and then trust that we can just remove it. Actually, you know what? I'll do it. We have the Edict, so we can very easily get rid of the... Uh, even if they have like a one mana protection spell, we can get rid of it. Our player mills four cards. They're going to start milling us. That's fine. Ugh. <clears throat> Show us the combo. I posted a, a link in the community tab to uh, somebody else who made a video about this deck. I don't think I'm going to make a video about it just because I feel like it's kind of uh, shown been shown off quite a bit. Do I want to kill the Ledger Shredder? I mean, they can't combo off this turn, so it probably couldn't hurt to kill the Ledger Shredder here. And the, the Abrade... I don't think we'll stop the combo as much. 
I could have edict instead. Which would have been probably better, to be honest. There's a little bit of damage. I'm going to risk it and I'm going to play out of Fleck. Yeah, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. I kind of wish it... No, that's actually all my... Uh... You're going to copy the Abuela's Awakening from their graveyard and cast it? The combo? Could have a counter spell, so this is another reason why playing Phyrexian Flesh Gorger was a bad idea. If they have a single counter spell, we're... Yeah, I regret playing this Flesh Gorger. Kind of just put my life in jeopardy for no reason. Should have played slower. I was just thinking about stopping things as fast as possible. Oh, wait, no, they tapped out. Interesting. Oh, okay, let me uh, respond to the trigger. Okay, uh... Marshall Wretched Sorrow, we can't kill it with that. Unless we exile, like, the Tiny Bones joined up, so we'll just kill this. You have to do two damage to us because it is a legendary enchantment. So when it becomes a creature, it is legendary. Ah, this March of Wretched Sorrow is kind of awkward. We have some creatures in our graveyard, which could help. We can attack with both, and if they block the pick lock. Prankster, we would only need to exile like Tiny Bones joins up to kill it with March of Wretched Sorrow. What could we return from our graveyard? We could return Shieldred. The combo back, yeah, the combo's back in their graveyard. So if they have another Abuelo's Awakening, they could combo off again. So kind of need to be careful there. I'm going to swing in with both. I don't think we're afraid of like losing our creatures here. Great to damage. In that case, honestly, I might just might just leave it be and uh, hold up our removal. I mean, I could play Sorin, and then I could use March of the Wretched Sorrow if necessary to uh, get rid of combo piece by exiling things from our hand to pay for it. I don't like playing into these combo decks because it's just, uh, they can win at any time and then the fact that I didn't draw a land is kind of annoying because now I'm kind of behind. Part of me wants to play out Soren, but then Soren's just going to die. I could play Tiny Bones Joins Up and that could hurt their hand some. I think I just passed turn. Let's learn from our mistakes. Not that they actually had like a counter spell or anything. I think we just have to take the hits. It's only only 10. We're going to be gaining 6 each turn. That works for me because I can edict away the other one. Play the cliffs, and then I think I shield Rid's edict, and then if necessary, I can exile a lot of things from my hand for the March of Wretched Sorrow. But I could also just hold this up. I don't need to edict here at sorcery speed. Opponent sifting through their hand or their their deck to find their combo pieces. I do really like this Rakdos deck because it just brings me back to like Rakdos mid-range days and just doing all the, the little things to slowly overwhelm our opponent. We've done a good job of uh, killing our opponent here. We will take the nine. Ledger Shredder. That is fine, I guess. I mean, I can Edict here. They could put how many counters on it? Three. 
So I would have to exile something, but I might edict this picklock prankster just to get rid of uh I don't want to be hitting being hit by a 9-9 anymore. And with the way things are, it's less likely that they're gonna have uh multiple ways to trigger the combo in their hand. Surveil three. We're down to 25 cards. We're at 37. So they're getting towards risk of milling out. My turn. Go ahead and swing in. I wonder if we play Soar in here and then take it up. Play Soren, take it down. We got we got to get some card advantage going because we're kind of running out of answers. So if the opponent has like two com can com try and combo twice in a turn. There's one Abuelo's Awakening, and I think the other one's an Exile. So they could have two in their deck. So they could be staring at two in hand. We don't have two removal spells right now. But if I play out the Soren, it's not like I'm gonna get a second removal spell from playing it out. But I could. I could at least uh, go ahead and play it out, make a 2-3 flyer to block and gain some life linking. Laughing Jasper Flint could start stealing combo pieces though, which is another thing. I'm going to actually make them discard and then I'm going to play Laughing Jasper Flint. Uh, actually, maybe I won't play Laughing Jasper Flint. I'll just start by making them discard. And then I can hold up this March of Red to Sorrow. There's one. Okay, so now they only have... Uh, I mean, they could draw into one of the third paths, whatever these sagas are called, founding of the third path that allows them to copy things from their graveyard, but it would tax their mana some. I think I'm going to go ahead and just pass. I really don't want this March of Wretched Sorrow to not be able to kill the opponent's creature. Mill more cards. Okay. That was interesting. Second spell, they'll trigger Ledger Shredder. That's fine. The land. I don't think we're gonna die to their deck if it's not gonna combo, so. That is fine. We'll take the damage. Can't waste a removal spell at this point. <clears throat> Four mana open. Do they go for it? Well, reanimate is a 1 1, so we can easily kill it with March. They go for it. Okay. While that trigger is on the stack, we will go ahead and kill it. One, two, three, four. Commit zero. This must die so they don't combo off. We do one damage to our face. That's fine. They make a nine nine ledger shredder, presumably. And we just need to get a go for the throat going. could we're not dying to in the air are we three nine that's 11 so i could just play Rakdos joins up and get a shieldred back that would be pretty darn good i could also get a phyrexian flesh gorger back as like a a nine seven lifelink menace that's pretty good <clears throat> play Soren, take it up. I'm playing one Soren because the card advantage on this card is actually disgusting. Uh, I think I think I might play Soren and just let it feed it to the wolves. Or we could just start trying to mill them out with Laughing Jasper Flynn. I think I'll start with this. Cause they got 17 cards in library. Mill one, lose one. They can use that on their upkeep, which is kind of close to being lethal if they oh they didn't if they put an upkeep stop there, they could cast this before they draw. Which could set them up for a pretty uh ridiculous draw. Start exiling cards with laughing Jasper Flint. Rakdos joins up. 
Excellent. That is definitely something I would like to see. Uh, so I think I need to get rid of this. This 9 9. I think I'll swing in with the Phyrexian Flash Gorger. Try and gain some life. And if they block it with the 9 9, then we can deal with it. I could also swing in with Jasper Flint, but I don't know if I want to do that. They shouldn't block with the 9 9. Okay, cool. We get some life, which is good. We might honestly want to just hold up r removal this turn. Rakdos joins up is kind of nice. But... It could get us like a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. It could just get us Shieldred. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. There's a lethal route here. All right, I've, I figured it out. Okay, I play this. If they don't have removal for our shieldred, we can win on their upkeep. Now you're thinking, huh? Huh? What are you on? What are you on? Uh, the trick is we can blow up our own creature, I think. With our March of Wretched Sorrows, we can kill our Laughing Jasper Flint by exiling Rakdos Joins Up. They're going to lose two life on their upkeep from Shieldred, but go down to three. We can kill our Jasper, gaining some life, and also dealing four damage to their face. Okay, maybe we are at risk. In a pinch, we can also just do, like, some damage and gain some life. Interesting strategy. They're going to just try and gain a bunch of life. Now they're just at risk of just drawing themselves out. Eight cards left. All right, well, I was a little wrong about whether or not we'd be able to finish off our opponent here, but <laughs> there they go. You can see they did it on their upkeep. There's one, two. Okay, did they get the combo? If they combo off here, I'm gonna actually lose my mind. Wait until you draw, and then you can use the draw discard. So you might just die if you do that, to be honest. Okay. 10 damage. How much of this damage do we need to stop? They can't cast a second spell, because if they do, they draw with Ledger Shredder. This is... How much life do we need to gain? So I could go up to three, four, nine. So I could do, they could do 13 damage to us. So we need to gain, I'll just exile both cards in my hand and pay five. And I will kill maybe a pit block prankster. Actually, I'll, this feels so weird to do, but I think I'm going to kill laughing Jasper Flint. And just hope that they lethal themselves. If they draw another card at this point, so if they cast a second spell, they lose. Pretty much it, I think. Gain two life, draw two cards, so I think I would turn into lethal. They draw their second card, or another card, they lose two life, and we win. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was way too close. They, Their last of play those Awakening was in their last few cards. Uh, all right, well, that was a game, I guess. That was a game. I say that last game, I did not expect them to chain together like three faithful mendings to gain a bunch of life. So that's why I thought the Rakdos joins up would have been better. They like chained together a bunch of life gain, uh, which was kind of problematic in terms of actually killing them there with the whole I'm gonna blow up my own Jasper Flint this hand seems alright we have removal on two we have a life linker on three so even if they're playing aggro we have a chance play the tap land on turn one we have two of these restless fans they're very nice because they can discard and draw a card which can help you gain life with shieldred in a pinch they also have menace Hunt gets to go first, which is not fair. 
It's not fair, man. Drawing into quite a few lands here. Six lands in our top nine cards. Kind of gross. I'm wondering if I should hold this go for the throat or if I should just blast it now. I could kill the generous visitor. The Kami of Transience is surely annoying, but it will just come back to them because it's way, the way it like returns from the graveyard. So I'm wondering if generous visitor would be better to kill here. You're going to draw a card from wedding announcement, which is kind of annoying because they attacked with two. So I could have done that prior to combat if I was thinking about that, which would have been good. Uh, so a bit of a misplay there. Alex, definitely a gross, a gross one here. What does it say? When our Calyx are an enchanted creature you control, do not have an audacity. Do not have an audacity. Yo. <laughs> okay, you just win. Congrats. Make a copy of, I don't know, wedding announcement. It's broken. <sighs> the game's already over. The opponent just literally had the absolute nut draw. I should have held the removal. I cast it a little too early, and then the opponent, like, like Calyx and Audacity turn four and just wins the game. And, you know, spirits. Disgusting. Need like a path of peril. Block it with Shieldred. Come on. So if I don't block it with Shieldred, I could potentially gain a bunch of life. Or like make them lose a bunch of life from drawing cards. I think they just have lethal. So if I block here and then I like block here, do I still die? I take six from this, six plus three plus one, that's 10. I gain three, I still die. So I literally have to block this way to not die. We draw a card. Audacity. They're going to draw three cards from their wedding announcements. Oh yeah, they get their Kami back because we put Calyx in the grave. <laughs> Yo, Shuffler, you, you good? I think I'm playing like 24 lands. All right, GG's. I checked. Yeah, 24 lands. <laughs> you know, happens, I guess. All right. Uh, four lands in the hand. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> what, what could go wrong? <laughs> I love these sleeves. Excited for uh, Modern Horizon 3 opponent is playing Mardu. White, black, red. We'll just play Magda. If you want to remove it, they can remove it. I don't really like the art they give you for if you like buy uh, 45 packs. Interesting, they march it. That was not what I was expecting, but pass. It's a little annoying, we can't necessarily path the peril with a cleave unless we get treasures from Magda. That's like my one complaint about path the peril is such a good card if you're playing Orzhov. If you're not playing Orzhov, eh, 
requires a little more, little more going on to uh, kind of be worth. Great, the two three. Sorry, I was clicking out of the game, and that's why the audio Soren was stuttering. Or maybe it, it was more so because I created a vampire right after playing him. Alright, Archangel of Wrath, that's disgusting. Bye bye, Soren. Re or Excuse my eagerness. I think what I will do is I'll play Sulphur Springs and then I will play Laughing Jasper Flint. And then I will wait till their turn to go for the throat. They look like they're running a lot of good cards that we would be happy to steal with Black and Jasper Flint. So I'm excited to see if we get to a... Uh, I think we'll take take three. Three is fine. Especially if they play something really juicy now. The Celestis, not so juicy. I mean, it's not so juicy for us. It's still a really good card. Pest Control. All right, we'll get rid of the Archangel of Wrath because it's in the skies and we don't have anything to do with it. And then there goes our... Yo, what was that? A land? Oh my god. Luck of the draw. All right, discard him. Discard him, opponent. I don't like that you have to like target and you can target multiple people. So you target yourself if you really want, which is kind of unique, but I just don't like having to do like multiple clicks every single time. Scarred a Sunfall, so presumably I don't think what we have is good enough to warrant a Sunfall, or they have a second one in hand, and this is going to be an absolute disaster because we don't have any man lands, and we have zero stuffs in hand. They could trigger the Celestis, but they'll take some from Shieldred. Land. Okay. It's Kaya! Yikes! I can't stand by them. That's not good. Kaya is so good. Go. Not good for us. Good for them. All right, what do we get? What do we get? High noon. Uh, that's awkward. I mean, I'll play high noon. Can't play a second spell on our turn now, but that's fine. Plan is just to sacrifice it to kill like Shieldred or something. Children's four mana value still, so we can't kill it with the Path of Peril, even though it's a token. The power of Kaya. Oh my god. Disgusting. I don't need a tap land. Jasper, save us. That's what I get for saying this deck is, is good. We're just gonna lose on repeat now. Yeah. No more shielded triggers. I can hold up high noon here and then target the uh, architect. Opponent can start draining us and just kill us in two turns though. So it's it's pretty doomed. Archangel of Wrath, yeah, that's bad as well. Whoops, I should have done this beforehand. Oh, doesn't even matter at this point. The game's over. Brain us. Play. They can kill us this turn. They just take up Kai and they play the Archangel. Man, I'm having trouble stringing any sort of win streak together here. Uh, Alright, this is a nice hand. We have pretty good 2 drop, pretty good 3 drop. Sweeper for low to the ground decks. 
Phyrexian Flesh Gorger for aggro decks. Like, the world is our oyster. Oyster. <laughs> a cool thing about Magda, this says target opponent, so every single turn you're committing a crime with a uh, Laughing Jasper friend. Flint. Quint. Opponent is mono green. What do we got? Mono green, big stuff. Okay. Don't know why the land decided, or the game sort of lagged after I played the land. Not letting me cast uh, Jasper there. Five mana. Did they make one with Outcaster Trailblazer? What do we get? The ape. Or is there another five drop that they would be playing? They could play uh, the Invoke the Ancients. Like the green Invoke is actually pretty good, probably with the uh, Trailblazer, funny enough. It's five mana, create two, four, fives with either Reach, Trample, or whatever. Nope, it's just Born Clex. That also works. Lands, draw a card, commit a crime, we get a treasure, scrap gorger. That actually is not bad. Uh, part of me wants to get rid of Voring Clex, but they can't flip it super soon, so we might just let it be. She can't string together multiple spells here, which is kind of gross. I kind of want to get the Scrap Gorger because we can Crime on their turn and our turn if we have the Scrap Gorger because we can target cards in their graveyard. Assuming we send something to their graveyard. I don't think this Path of Peril will be super useful, so we might be able to exile it to the March of Wretched Sorrow. Or, yeah, March of Wretched Sorrow to uh, kill something here. Could try and, like, force a trade with Warring Clex with, like, Jasper. But they could also block it with the Trailblazer. I think we'll just pass and try and remove something with the March of Wretched, Sor Wretched Sorrow. It's not a great removal spell, but it's really good against these aggro decks that care about your life total so much. And if the sweeper is going to be very useful. Actually, we could full on sweeper next turn, but I don't think we want to because we have the treasure. We can pay for the white. I think we're going to go ahead and get rid of Trailblazer. We will have two mercenaries. Yeah, we'll have two mercenaries. We get another treasure token with Magda. If we steal Warring Clex, we got to remember not flip it because if it flips it it exiles and then it goes since it owned by them just controlled by us uh it would go to their side of the board it's not really what we want we rent them some drawing some cards here which is nice you can just play a full cost uh flesh gorger next turn which is nice the opponent is approaching uh wow double lands is kind of Kind of upsetting, I'm not going to lie. <sighs> Alright, play Haunted Ridge. We could make a flying 4-4 with Magda, just sacrificing the to treasures. I could tutor something to my graveyard and then reanimate it with the Rakdos joins up. Or I could just like tutor Shieldred onto the battlefield with Lively Dirge as well. Tons of options, it's just a matter of what is the right option here. I wish we had a way to like tutor uh, Soren onto the battlefield. Uh, I think we're gonna go with a flesh gorger. I'm not gonna use the scrap gorger here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, treasures because I don't want to crime them yet. So we already crimed with our uh, scrap gorger. Not looking to trade anything here. We're not playing a ton of Outlaws, and I think that's one way you could improve Laughing Jasper Flint. I used to be playing the uh, the one mana pirate thing that cares about dying. I think that would be a really good in this deck. Uh, oh, they're going to kill the Flush Gorger. Interesting. I mean, we don't entirely mind that. Hello upsetting but they could 
They, they can't really push lethal here, so. Okay. Uh, I don't really want to trade Dra Jasper, and I don't know if I want to get rid of my Scarf Gorger yet, because we could steal something from them. I think we'll just take the 10. Yeah, get rid of this. It's a crime. Get ourselves a treasure. Next turn, we'll have so many cards and so many treasures. Gold vein. That's huge. That is a pretty huge card. Could play this, and then I could also play the Rakdos joins up to get back our Flesh Gorger, which I think we're kind of going to want to do. They're one mana off of getting their Voring Clex, and we haven't drawn a single removal spell. How many are we running? I showed so many in the deck. It's kind of upsetting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're kind of doomed in that regard. I don't know if there's anything we can do about that. In terms of them flipping Voring Clex here. I'm just going to play this. We have to exile something. So we'll exile this. And then we'll grab our creature back. It's a 9 7. We can play this for 2 mana, and then we have just a chump blocker. And then when it dies, it makes a tap treasure, so that's okay. Probably Dirge can get his shieldred, so he can start gaining some life, maybe. On top of the flesh gorgers, but we really just need to draw a removal. <laughs> they drew a land, and so they can flip their Voring Clex and. Put two big creatures onto the battlefield and pump up a bunch of stuff. It's kind of game over. Just literally did not find a single removal spell for... I had one removal spell in the top 13 cards in her deck. Kind of what it feels like. Fight of Industry, blow up our Flesh Gorger. GG's. So upsetting. That's nine damage. That puts them down to seven. If we have one more legendary, we could kill them. We might actually be able to sneak a win here if we can survive a turn. And block the vein gold vein hydra. Chump the topiary stomper. And I can double block the titan with Magda and Laughing Jasper Flint. That'll deal six damage thanks to Rakdos joins up. And then we just need to tutor up Shieldred and hope it lives uh, to their upkeep. It's going to be 4 damage plus 2. And then we just need to get Shieldred with this. Okay. Uh, it's children time. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, children, you're gonna have to win the game for us. Thank you. Play a flesh, Phyrexian Flesh Gorger for fun. It's not exactly what I was thinking to do, Armored Scrap Gorgers, but, you know, to each their own, I'll just exile random things. Find more Lone Speaker. Okay, it's the sneaky draw a card, lose a life, win. Do they have any ways to draw or gain life at instant speed? <sighs> I'm holding my breath. Okay. Oh, I think they're trying to put Titan of Industry onto the battlefield at instant speed, but they did not find a Titan of Industry. It doesn't appear. And they're going to draw a card if they put the anything onto the battlefield with the Trailblazer. So I think they actually just kill themselves regardless of what happens. <clears throat> yep. 
They tried. That was that was clever. I didn't even think about that. Putting putting a, a Titan of Industry with Smuggler Surprise. The only problem there is just also they would have drawn cards with the Outcaster Trailblazer, so would have still putting them down some life. Or they would have to use the gain five from Titan, but I think the trigger from that would go on the stack first. Okay, uh I mean I guess I keep. Really don't like the fact that I have two tap lands, but having one on tap land means we can tap land turn one on tap land turn two and then our lands come in untapped. Uh we have some removal. Oh my god, it's not another one of the combo decks, please. Though if it's Azori's control, that's also pretty bad, I think. What does our match history look like with this deck? What is our least win rates? Yeah, 0 and 2 against Azorius. <laughs> Not a good sign. Not a good sign. Play Rakdos joins up. Or sorry, Tiny Bones joins up to see if we can... Okay, so we're playing Azorius Control. It's not one of the combo decks. Most likely. Uh... Man, I don't really want to run something out into Counterspell, but Flesh Gorger is pretty good. This has to be one of my like more favorite cards from uh, Brothers War. They might have a sweeper here, so maybe we don't run anything else out. They drew into three Restless Anguishes, which is kind of uh, unfortunate for them in terms of massive amounts of tap lands. They can't, like, Wandering Emperor this turn. Land, and I think it might just pass. Might be the wrong move. <clears throat> I was taking a bit of a drink of water there in my throat. A little bit scuffed up from um, speaking so much the past couple of days. Hmm. Get in there, Flesh George. Wandering Emperor. Elizabeth Smite. March of Otherworldly Light. That is. That's awkward. Alright, we still have access to Edict. Jasper might be able to take over the game with card advantage. But admittedly, our opponent seems to be playing mostly removal, so I don't know if we'll get a ton of impactful cards, especially if our opponent doesn't put anything onto the board. If they put like a Teferi, a Jace, maybe they maybe you'd find something off uh, useful off of Jasper. Because I imagine a bunch of get lost. In their deck it really depends on what what style they're going for of their deck because I've seen still seen some people running the uh, fateful absence which is the card that gives you a clue instead of like the two map tokens but only hits creatures planeswalkers instead of also enchantments uh, bovine intervention sure Kind of weird, but... Whatever floats your goat. Uh, kind of want to go in with the vents, but at the same time, I'm kind of worried about them killing the vents. I think it's worth it. We have enough lands. Going down one isn't as painful. You're going to let me attack with it? We're going to kill it before I get to do the attacks.
Watch over the really light is really good against Manlands. That does work. Oh. Time to get oxed, motherfucker. I'm gonna play the soak is on. Oh, wait. I played a land for turn. My bad. I forgot. Alright. <laughs> Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey, Mr. Teferi. Doing something, you have two cards in hand. It's... I'm not attacking in. They have two uh, restless anchorages that they could block with, so... And they're two threes, so they could just activate one, chump block it, and they would the anchorage wouldn't die, the ox would. Uh I don't know what our opponent is on, but they're playing wash away. Great. Uh, I really was not hoping to match up against this as like one of the final matches I wanted to <laughs> add to the video. <laughs> holy crap, it's such a slow game. Huh? You have so many man lens. You're not going to activate them? You're just going to memory deluge again? Ay ay ay. I was ready to send all their man lands to the Shadow Realm. Good talk. <laughs> Two man lands down. It's hard to pause between every single game action while the opponent like thinks about what they're doing. Holding the March of Wretched Star just in case they play a Planeswalker, this can actually hit Planeswalkers. Ah, you're a filthy Sphinx player, that's great. Bye bye Sphinx. Now it makes sense their do nothing plan. Fine Sphinx, fine Counterspell. Alright, Marshall Richard sorrowed it. Wow, 
I'm just running these out. I could hold one back, but I think our best bet is to try and finish them off this next turn. Uh, because I think the longer the game goes, the better it is for them since they're able to keep churning through their deck with these memory deluges. Card is busted. B -b 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 busted. Ah, goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> Don't come again. No, I'm joking. All right. I think probably the reason they're playing bovine is just so they have ways to remove artifacts. So I think it hits artifacts or creatures. We have removal on two, action on three. We saw what happened there when we just kept drawing into uh, some good. I think I might hold the go for the throat and go for a uh, path of peril on turn two. Unless they like dump a billion pump spells onto the uh Ah Gruel Goblins is not was not on my uh not on my bingo sheet. Alright. Exile your cards. See if you hit any uh goblins. It's gonna hurt a little bit. They hit another goblin, and then what do they hit? Mono. Okay. Cool. I think I might jam out Soaring and then take it up or take it down for the. My goodness, can you just chill out for a second? Uh. We go for the throat, Rudevelt, and then we Virtue Persistent the Concophony Scamp so they don't do any damage because its power is gonna be less than one. Big brain, a big good brain. Uh, negative two power, gain us two life. I dare you. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. All right, we've made it sort of past the first few turns. Third, third rude belt horde master, huh? Yo, somebody needs to check your deck. Check yo deck. Um, hit Soren plus one. No, <laughs> seems like a really bad plan. Soren tick down, try and chump block, then start drawing cards with Soren. Is this like a good opportunity to play at Soren? The only problem is like if Picnic Runer gets Trample, but do we see anything that would give Trample yet? No, but they haven't really gotten a chance to stick a creature on the board. I think. We just play Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. The Flesh George. It's gonna hurt a little bit, but it's a life linker. Really wish we drew a land there, but you know. We drew all those lands in that first game or whatever <laughs> it was where we drew. Holy crap, chill out. The goblins, what the There's the trample, there's the double strike. Oh my god. I don't hold up removal and I die. Cool. <laughs> that is disgusting. Uh, I mean, I kind of get rid of need to get rid of the picnic ruiner, and then I kind of need to swing in, and then I do I die on the crackback? Yes, I do. We lost to gruel goblins. Uninstall. I guess that's the answer. Okay, uh, this hand sucks. We are never going to draw a fourth land. We might as well give up. Opponent goes first as well. But yeah, drawing into a fourth land, having nothing to do on turn three. This hand is crap. Hand is better. Opponent is playing something. Not often you see one of those tap lands. Another one of the tap lands. Maybe it's a. Nope, it's less the enchantment. Uh, do we hold the go for the throat up? I think we can spare one turn just because they don't have four mana, so they can't, like. Uh. 
what is that enchantment guy's name? Calyx into an audacity on turn this turn. We can play Calyx and then Kami is gonna get a bunch of stuff and whatnot, but. Wizards, what the fuck am I looking at? What is this war crime? Holy crap, dude. I guess it's my bad for not recognizing that Slesnia is an aggro deck, so you can't develop your board. Huh? Huh? You're getting rid of Tiny Bone Joins Up. Okay. And sure. Sure, bro. I mean, you're gonna get both of these commies back because of the way it's disgusting, disgusting card that it is. Shut the fuck up. Like, legitimately. This game is nowhere close to over. Just because you got a good start doesn't mean the game's over. Holy crap. Sorry, I got really irritated by that. It's just, I can't handle stupid sometimes, I guess. What is the right answer here? I mean, we can play Jasper and then we get a crime on our upkeep. I could Insatiable Average to try and draw some cards. There's also something attractive about that, but I'm tempted to hold the Average so I can trigger target them with it. I might just do, do both here and then I can tutor up another Average so I can target them eventually. Oh, I know what we do. We do this, do this, draw. Mm -mm -mm. Fuck you. We draw the fuck you card so we can kill them. We also drew into another avarice, which is nice. But this should wrap up a lot of their board. We can block with the Horde Master or Magda. We drew another card, that's not good for them. Bye. If I had three mana here, they would be dead. <laughs> I could target them with this Avarice and that would uh, deal 9 damage to them. But I can do it next turn. Assuming that they uh... This is why you don't good game. <laughs> like... <laughs> this is a lesson. Let this be a lesson to all of you. Do not good game preemptively. Because your spirited companion will kill you. Goodbye. GG's. Sort of. Alright, well that's going to do it for today's deck. Hopefully you enjoyed. We kind of ended up going even throughout the course of the games, but uh, I think there's definitely some games where we got a little unlucky um, and the opponents got a bit lucky. Uh, we got a few narrow wins there. We won against the Slesnia deck. Uh, that last deck where the opponent said good game and then we just absolutely dunked on their board with the power of path of peril or path of peril uh and uh we also had that narrow game against the mono green deck where we killed them with shieldred shieldred still proving why it is one of the most disgusting cards in standard uh but yeah i think laughing jasper flint also has some of that kind of potential baked into it just taking over the game if it gets to stick around uh and yeah 
Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Helps out a ton. If you enjoyed today's video, maybe you'll enjoy yesterday's video where we played like an Is It Prowess deck. Definitely a much faster deck. Um, but yeah. Have a nice morning, evening, night, afternoon, wherever and whenever you're watching. Ciao.